brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is the fifth Sunday after Epiphany, and in our service today, God encourages us to be a blessing to the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. May you have grace and peace from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our sermon text is recorded in Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 20. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its flavor, how will it become salty again? Then it is no good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled on by people. You are the light of the world. A city located on a hill cannot be hidden. People do not light a lamp and put it under a basket. No, they put it on a stand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine in people's presence, so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy them, but to fulfill them. Amen, I tell you. Until heaven and earth pass away, not even the smallest letter or even part of a letter will in any way pass away from the law until everything is fulfilled. So whatever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Indeed, I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and experts in the law, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Holy Spirit, use us as instruments of your word. Guide our words and actions that we may function as salt and light in this world for the furthering of your gospel. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, People often enter the profession of teaching because they want to have an effect on the lives of others. They believe that through their teaching they can influence young people in positive ways and help them become mature, responsible, and productive members of society. The same attitude is often seen in coaches, mentors, and other volunteers. They want to affect the lives of others. Our Lord Jesus was the master teacher. He frequently met with his disciples, and he taught them what it really means to be one of his disciples. Today's sermon text is a continuation of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, which we also heard about in last week's Gospel reading. Jesus wanted to present an accurate picture of what life would be like for those who would follow him. And one thing in particular comes out very clearly in his message. Jesus didn't call his disciples to sit on the sidelines. He called them to influence the people around them, the people who lived with them in their homes, the people who lived around them in their neighborhoods. And Jesus has called us for the same reason, telling us, you are salt and light. Salt has many qualities. Some are positive, while others are negative. On the positive side, today salt is used primarily as a seasoning for food, something which adds flavor and variety to the things we eat. It's also uh, important as a preservative in order to make our food last longer. In our particular climate, salt is used to melt ice, making our roadways and sidewalks at least a little bit safer to travel. Salt also aids in retaining body fluids, and that's something which can be good or bad. And entirely on the negative side, salt can be a major factor in causing high blood pressure in our bodies, as well as eating away the metal parts of our cars and trucks. In Jesus' day, salt was used almost entirely as a preservative. <clears throat> now, since they didn't have refrigerators or freezers, food would quickly rot and decay unless it was treated with salt. Salt would significantly slow down the process of decay. 
Jesus says, you are the salt of the earth. And that means that we Christians are able to influence people by telling them about Jesus and the forgiveness of sins which he has earned for them, so their lives won't decay and perish because of their sins. Sin is a corrupting power in people's lives, and it ultimately leads them to eternal death. It wasn't long after Adam and Eve had fallen into sin that the world found itself in big trouble. We're told that in the days of Noah, in the sight of God, the earth was morally corrupt, and the earth was filled with violence. God looked at the earth and saw that it was corrupt, for all flesh was corrupt in all their ways on the earth. In Jesus' day, he called the people a wicked and adulterous generation. And our society is no different. The immorality and violence in our cities, the sexual perversion and godlessness on our phones and laptops and televisions, the unwillingness to submit ourselves to the Lord and his commandments, these things all testify to the total decay of our nation, in fact, of our world. Sin always brings rot and decay, and eventually it also leads to total destruction. But we are salt, and as salt, we need to do what we can to pre prevent that rot and decay. When we were born into this world, we were also dead in our sins. But in his grace, God made us alive again through Jesus. In holy baptism, we were connected to Jesus, to his life, to his death, and to his resurrection. So when Jesus died on the cross to pay for the sins of the world, we also died. And when he rose again from the dead, we rose too. But our sins remain dead in the grave. Jesus provided us with forgiveness for all our sins, and we were set free from sin and its curse. Through Jesus, we are conquerors, and with the gift of the Holy Spirit, we can now live a new life, a life which brings glory to our Heavenly Father. We are the salt of the earth. But salt can't do what it's capable of doing if it isn't spread around, if it stays in the salt shaker. Jesus has called us to be a blessing to the world, to call out the sin and evil which is so prevalent in today's world, and to point people to the grace and forgiveness which is ours through him. We have the message of salvation, but if we don't share it, it won't do others any good. Nevertheless, pointing out the lies and evils of the world's hollow and sinful philosophies and the emptiness which they bring, and replacing it with the salt of God's word will not automatically make us popular. In fact, it's just the opposite. But that salt is urgently needed. Can we stand by and say nothing as we see people putting their hope for salvation in themselves, in their own good works, when we know that the prophet Isaiah wrote, all our righteous acts are like a filthy cloth. This generation needs to, to, to hear us speak against the wickedness and evil which is so prevalent today. We need to encourage them to repent and save yourselves, every one of you, from the Lord's fierce anger. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. The only way to be saved from sin is through faith in Jesus. He took our sin on himself, died the death which we deserved, and rose from the dead to bring us life and salvation. Through Jesus, the corrupting effect of sin in our lives has been annulled. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. This is a message that must be shared, and as the salt of the earth, it's up to you and me to do it. Our text goes on to tell us what will happen if we don't. If salt has lost its flavor, how will it become salty again? Then it is no good for anything 
except to be thrown out and trampled on by people. When we purchase a bottle of Tylenol or ibuprofen, it has a date on the side of the bottle. That doesn't mean that the pain reliever is no good after that date, but it does mean that it will begin to lose its effectiveness. Eventually, it will be no good at all, and we might as well toss it in the trash. That can happen to us as well. Followers of Jesus can lose their saltiness. We can become less effective and ultimately ineffective. And that happens when we give ourselves over to the sinful conduct of the world and when we allow our faith to become inactive. We are the salt of the earth, and we need to stay salty. That starts by remaining in Jesus, keeping our faith strong with God's word and sacrament. The Holy Spirit works through those means of grace and helps us to avoid being polluted by the world and its temptations. But as salt, we are also called upon to provide seasoning, not for food, but for the world. That seasoning comes from our perspective as Christians, a perspective which enables us to look at everything that happens in this life from its best side, knowing that even in the worst of times, God will find a way to bring us safely through. Jesus also used another common term to illustrate the influence that his disciples are to have on the world. He said, you are the light of the world. Now, Jesus also called himself the light of the world, a light sent by God to shine the light of salvation on sin-darkened souls. Jesus himself shines with the majesty of God. His sinless life shines. His substitutionary death shines as he demonstrated his great love for us even while we were still sinners. But most brilliantly of all, his resurrection from the dead shines, proclaiming the good news of forgiveness, life, and salvation, which he has freely provided for all people. As Christians, we are to be a blessing to the world by reflecting that light in our lives. Most of the people in our world today are living in darkness. Those who have made money or science or government their God and even those who act as if there is no God at all, they're all living in darkness. Because they have rejected Jesus as the Savior from sin, they are blind to the one true God. But we are the light of the world, and Jesus wants our light to be both visible and radiant. If light isn't visible, it, it has no purpose. Jesus asks, why would anyone light a lamp and then place it under a basket? The whole purpose for lighting the lamp is so that the light can be seen. Christians are to be noticeable too. We should stand out from the rest of the people in the world. Christians have lots of differences. We, we have different backgrounds and levels of education. We have different families and friends. We have different gifts and abilities. And we have different challenges and opportunities. But one thing is exactly the same for all of us. We have the light of Jesus. We know that he is our savior and that knowledge needs to be shared. We have the light of the Holy Spirit's peace, joy, goodness, and grace. We are new creations in Jesus. So be a blessing to the world as you let your light shine in people's presence so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, in great love, you kept your promise and came to give your life as a ransom for sinners. Look on us with patience and please don't throw us away. You are the searcher of our hearts, and you know whenever we have begun to turn away from you. When that happens, restore our sagging faith through your Holy Spirit. Bless the confessions of faith which we make before others, 
and save us from the hypocrisy of mere outward worship. Let ours be a sincere and honest faith, a faith which worships you in spirit and in truth. Train us to search our hearts and live lives diligently to, to discover the flaws that, that are there and help us to correct them. In order that our faith may be daily nurtured and strengthened, make us deeply devoted to your word. Give us each a childlike faith, a faith which trusts what it cannot understand and believes what it cannot see. Lord, help us to be good salt and bright light among the people of the world. May we continue to show our faith and love for you and for others by keeping your commandments and refusing to yield to temptation. Make our new man strong through your word and sacrament, that we may be victorious over every evil thought, desire, word, and deed. Amen. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen.